So I wanted to take a moment here to just take us through a tour of what's actually going on here in the objectifier. Um, and so we'll start here by first taking a look at this processing sketch that's running. So processing here is doing all of the hard work of receiving all of the serial data that's coming from the Arduino board. And this sketch is actually just drawing a simple graph here of my heart rate um, and then the time in between um, my heartbeat, between heartbeats. So the only data that comes out of the Arduino board uh, or over the serial channel is just this uh, BPM data and this IBI data. And that uh, equates to beats per minute, so that's being calculated on the actual board, as well as the actual um, time in milliseconds that elapses between each um, heartbeat. Taking that in mind, the data that was most useful to me um, when building the objectifier was just actually the BPM data. And so in order to get that into Isadora, rather than worrying about uh, how to parse the serial data in Izzy, I decided that um, it would be easier, or maybe not easier, but at least uh, worth uh, thinking about as I'm passing the data from this processing sketch over to Isadora with a little bit of open sound control. So what I've done here in processing is I've actually um, installed the OSC library and then I've also gone ahead and um, amended this sketch so that it passes uh, BPM data over uh, OSC to Isadora. So what's happening in Isadora? So here in Isadora I've got a couple different scenes that are set up for this. Um, so the first thing to know is that this window right here is actually um, what's going to go out to the projector, but because I don't have a, a projector attached right now, that's just our um, example space of what's going on. So I've got a few different scenes and a few different controls that are actually going to allow us to navigate through all of this space. Uh, so the first scene that we start in is this kind of opening place. And here, this place has a simple little video that runs on a loop. Um, while we're in this space. So when we're not interacting with an actual uh, participant, when there's not someone that's actually using the objectifier or the deobjectifier, instead they get, um, we can just pass this video information uh, over to the projector so that the mediated space still stays active. That was a real reason that I went ahead and made this part of the sketch. Um, and so the next scene that happens after this is the calibration scene. And the idea here being that um, we need a space where we can actually calibrate how this is going to work for each individual before we go ahead and jump into actually working with the geobjectifier. And in here, the whole point of this uh, space is to make sure that we're actually capturing some uh, live OSC input, some live um, data about what's happening, what's coming from the actual heart rate monitor. And I can see here that my values are changing in real time. So that's great. Um, and then another just, you know, goofy thing to play around with is that the playback rate of this movie is predicated on um, a scale value of a person's heart rate. So we can see here that a scaled heart rate of 55 beats per minute um, turns out to play this back at about 100% um, of its regular speed. So that's great. Um, that, means, that also means that if my heart rate goes up here uh, at any point, then the playback of it, this video will also speed up. This also gives me an opportunity to come over here in this calibration section and go ahead and identify what a kind of baseline heart rate for someone is. So um, the kind of lower limit that we probably want to aim for is somewhere around where the person's resting heart rate is. So I'm going to go ahead and make this value, uh, let's say, 60. And um, I'm going to go ahead and make the upper limit here something more like 70. So the, now that I've got these values calibrated, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the next scene, which is the models. So here in the models section, I have two different models that I can choose from right now. I've got a female model, and then I've also got a male model. Um, and we can toggle back and forth between those, those two different um, models here. So we'll notice that um, there my BPM is, is displayed on the screen, as well as this heartbeat uh, animation, which is influenced by my actual heart rate, um, although it's not actually true to what my heart rate is. I'm gonna, just going to go ahead and make sure that I'm, um, my values here are right, so it's 60, 70, and this, this input data is then getting passed over here 
to my scale values. So I can see here that 60 and 70 have um, come right across in here. So those are coming in as my um, minimum and maximum values. And that's going to be transformed into a scale of 0 to 100. And that'll be important to see here um, how that works and why that works um, in just one moment. So what should happen now, once I turn um, on the objectifier, is that as my heart rate goes up, um, and I can see that it's going up right now, is that the clothing on the model becomes increasingly transparent. Um, and as a part of the uh, disincentive for trying to disrobe the model that you're seeing on the screen, is there's a, uh, a message that shows up on top of that uh, chastising you for your particular uh, emotional response. So there I can see I'm a bastard because I think women are sex toys. So if I take a few moments here um, and take some deep breaths, I should be able to get my heart rate to go back down. And in the process, ideally, I can hopefully start to uh, see um, individuals as people and not as objects. So that was lovely. It worked just the way that I wanted it to. Um, if we switch over to the male model, the same thing happens. We can see already his clothes are starting to become transparent. And there we go. All right. So I'm a bastard. He's manlicious. And again, um, if I take a moment um, and regain my composure, uh, hopefully he is dressed again. Lovely.